I really don't know how to thank you, sir. Oh, you don't have to thank me. It's only a sausage. And then you are a friend of Fox, aren't you? No. Ah, oh, Christmas. A holiday of love and giving. And what better way to celebrate than watching your favorite Christmas movies? Frosty the Snowman, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, The Grinch, not that one. Ah, oh, yes, that one. All classics. But if you have a taste for something a little bit more bold and exotic, then might I tempt you with Christmas in New York? That's right, folks. We are back at it again with that North Korean Italian Mondo TV nonsense. And this time, it's gonna hit you hard. None of you are ready for this. You think you are, but you're not. <laughs> so last year, I did Christmas crap, and I covered a bunch of terrible stuff. Elf bowling, the nuttiest nutcracker, the Christmas tree. They come from the mares. All of it, garbage. But none of them quite compare to the utter chaos that is Christmas in New York. Fox, my friend! This film is like a fan fiction made manifest. And even if you have context from the animated series it's based on, there's still a very good chance you're gonna get lost. Here, let me explain the series leading up to this point. You have Simba King Lion, a show that was a blatant ripoff of The Lion King. It combines The Jungle Book with The Lion King with Bambi. They go on adventures. They fight a bunch of hyenas. They fight a tiger named Shere Khan. It's absurd. Then the show leads into Winner and the World Cup, which is this poodle who participates in a soccer match in New York and Simba and his dinosaur friends and <laughs> Bambi, Bimbo, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. Hello, Bimbo! They fight in the sewers to rescue their friends. And then there's Winner and the Golden Child, which is like, I can't even really give it justice. Like, you've got this kid who is the blonde version of the Messiah, who is being saved by a fairy and dinosaurs and taken to Simba to be raised by his daughter, who is a lion goddess. It doesn't make sense. <sighs> So I've mentioned SEK Studio before in my Pocahontas, Simba King Lion, and Squirrel and Hedgehog videos. It's a North Korean based animation studio that is stationed in Pyongyang. This is, to me, one of the most interesting animation studios in the world. Like, yeah, you got Disney and Illumination and Pixar, but none of them quite compare to the fascination of a studio that is based in a tyrannical regime. Like, this is straight up a dictatorship. That is unreal and very fascinating. They've been doing their thing since the 1950s and started off with their own series, such as Squirrel and Hedgehog. One of their most recent things is the second season of The Boy General which is based on their history, where you got like this pseudo anime animation, and it's based on the history of the North Korean ancestors and their conquest. There's also a mobile game about it. <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm actually shocked to learn that the North Koreans have cell phones that are capable of mobile games that are about the boy general from the North Korean history books. What the actual hell? Oh, and to top it all off, apparently the game is a lot like Minecraft? <laughs> so outside of the original content, which is essentially propaganda cartoons made by SEK Studio, they find themselves quite often being used as an outsource studio. And their main customer is Mondo TV, 
Mondo TV itself is an Italian-based studio. They're the guys who made those Titanic cartoons and movies. They're also the same ones who did Simba King Lion and the Pocahontas cartoon. Essentially, they're a bunch of hack frauds, and they like to outsource their work to SEK Studio. Could you imagine that? A bunch of North Korean animators working on a show commissioned by an Italian studio, and the movie is called Christmas in New York. What the hell? And that's not even talking about the context of the actual show itself, which is like a million times more absurd. <laughs> a fair warning, the following review is completely insane. Nobody is ready for this. This movie is the definition of chaos, of entropy, of insanity, and your head might explode after watching this movie. Fair warning, just letting you all know. Heck, I even got drunk before recording this video just to soften the blow to my own psyche. This was probably a bad decision. Uh, <laughs> see you all on the other side. Come Let's go. <laughs> So what's the movie about? An easy question to ask, but one that's incredibly hard to answer. Like I said before, there's a ton of context that exists before the movie, and if you don't know it, you're already lost. Heck, even if you know it, you're still gonna be confused. By the way, this is the hardest I've ever laughed while watching a movie. I can't give it justice. It is beyond absurd. I watched this movie with my friends, and I think I was laughing throughout, like, 90% of the film. Here's a quick highlight reel. That was kind of a weird, like, touch. <laughs> All right, back to the movie. So we're in the jungle, and we meet our three main characters, Ari, Winner, and Fox. <laughs> Isn't it marvelous? I'm I'm having flashbacks right now to how terrible and nightmarish these old series were. Lions and dinosaurs and fairies and lasers, oh my. You know what's worse than that? This movie's dialogue. They talk over each other all the time. There are moments where you can't even tell what the characters are saying. They just talk. Oh, you're talking? Well, hey, guess what? Screw you. It's time for this character to talk at the very same moment. But everyone knows where he is and But I know he where is. he is. I really know. I know where he is. So yeah, we got our three main characters from three previous series of the expanded cinematic North Korean Mondo universe, and they talk about how it's hot in the jungle. It isn't necessary to stay here and suffer. Let's go now to a place where I can freshen up. Yes, people. This is what launches our Christmas adventure. It's too hot in the jungle. <laughs> Why did I drink before recording this? I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> okay, so we talked to this pompous owl teacher, who again is a recurring character in these previous series. The three of them are like, yo, teacher, uh, it's so hot. Let's go to New York City because it's Christmas. And also, I want to meet Father Christmas so I can give him a letter because I want to see my parents. That's an entirely different animal, folks. I can't even really explain it. Just know that this boy is essentially Jesus Christ if he was blonde. I'm actually laughing. A couple of Italians hired some North Koreans to animate their fan fiction. Is this reality? How great. This is fun. All right. So the owl is like, okay, uh, you can go to New York City, uh, put on some clothes, write a letter to Santa Claus because... Um, why not? Uh, we need plot in this movie. So you got Ari writing to Santa, 
with his uh, very British voice. Dear Santa Claus, I want to uh, give many, many hot dogs to my friends. That's actually a line. Listen. I would like that my friend Fox has a party with his friends with many, many, many hot dogs. So the team is ready to go to New York, and they enter the uh, orifice of the Great Deku Tree, which, by the way, I don't know how this works, because apparently they're in the jungle, and the tree takes them. It's, you know, I thought it would be like a teleportation thing, but no, the tree just literally moves. So somehow the tree moves from the jungle, which by the way, there aren't jungles here in America. So I assume you went across the ocean somehow and got to New York City to like, what's it called? Central Park? Yeah, that one. Guys, I legitimately, this is a fanfic come to life. I have no idea what's going on. Did you see how funny that doggy in the scarf is? Look, 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 look. Eh? So they arrive in Central Park, Fox's hometown. Isn't that great? This dog's name is Fox, which, by the way, becomes a problem for the voice actors later on. Speaking of which, the hot dog vendor. Oh, you don't have to thank me. It's all your sausage. And then you are a friend of Fox, aren't you? The group decides that Fox needs to find some leashes for him and Winner. So he runs off into the city and explores it. Wait, hold on. Am I seeing this right? It, did you guys rip off Balto? Oh, come on, this can't be real. You guys did not steal from Balto. <coughs> yeah, you did. So Fox returns back to the park. He gets his leash on, gives one to Winner, and the group takes off into the city. But not before meeting the antagonist of this movie, the Cockneyed Accent Dog Catcher. Oi, you there! I see you, you little Umi. Hey there, Fox, I finally found you. There's some backstory here that was never explained, and it's up to the audience to play catch up. Uh, does the scotch is got it all? It all. <laughs> this time you'll go to prison. Uh, have you understood? <laughs> Guys, by the way, it gets so much worse as it goes on. Like, imagine that this movie is a tornado, and it just keeps spinning faster and faster, and you're holding on for dear life, and you don't know what's happening because the plot doesn't give a damn about you. That is this movie. This is the most nonsensical Christmas movie ever created, and it was done by North Koreans, which only makes it more <laughs> bizarre. Well, are you gonna talk or not? I can tell you know something. And what Christmas would be complete without looking into the window of a toy store? Oh. 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 Ah, yes, my favorite JPEGs. Winnie the Pooh, Mickey and Minnie Mouse, and Bob the Builder. Oh, and watermelons. What the hell? These are actually JPEGs. What is this movie? I'm sorry, I'm gonna be saying that a lot while talking about this topic. This film is off the rails insanity. Your dog has scared my poor puffy. Mm. So I think the objective right now is for the group to find Santa Claus. Because again, the, the main reason why they went to New York is because it was hot in the jungle. <laughs> okay, so they see Santa Claus across the street and Ari here decides to run across seven lanes of traffic. Wait, where are you going? Be careful. Okay, so this part is incredibly confusing. Santa's like, I'm a worker for Santa Claus and you have to give me your letter. And all the like animals, like the dogs are like, no, don't do it. And Santa like with a nefarious look, looks at the dogs like, what are you all trying to do? You trying to ruin me here? And then there's this entire thing about knowing the names of the reindeer. Out of nowhere, they bring that up. And then like Santa Claus puts the moves on the kid. Of course, that's not the actual context of the film, but my God, ladies and gentlemen, it sure as hell looks like it. See for yourself. And uh, any wish I can give to him. Yeah, right? That's a bit much. Can I help you? No, but maybe I can help you. I need an adult. I am an adult. <laughs> So now the objective is to discover the name of the reindeers because we're running out of story, so we gotta come up with something. So obviously we're not gonna do that immediately. Instead, we're gonna run off to the Catholic Church 
and go meet up with Fox's old friends. I don't believe it. Fox has returned. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Guys, I don't know. Is this offensive? It, I, my gut tells me it is. And there's a very good chance they got white people to voice this character. So can you imagine the voice director in like this Italian dub <laughs> being like, all right, try to sound black. <laughs> Like, listen to these voices. They sound so bizarre. Do you want to get slapped? Look out how you talk. Can't you see this child here? <laughs> what were they thinking? A bunch of Italians talking about New York City, animated by North Koreans. What is this movie? And why is the priest touching the boy? Okay, you got to get out of this city, kid. It's not safe here for you. <clears throat> My, your hand's real cold, Harry. Come on. I need an adult. I am an adult. By the way, a running theme in this movie is the following. Go to new place, meet up with Fox's old friends, eat food, and then go off to your next adventure. And here comes one of the most confusing parts of the movie. The dog catcher, who is introduced as the antagonist, is all of a sudden a good guy. Oh. <laughs> I don't understand. My neck almost snapped from how much of a 180 this part of the movie was. Just out of nowhere, the dog catcher is like feeding squirrels and birds, and the group returns to Central Park, and they're like, oh no, it's a dog catcher. Oh wait, never mind. He's nice now? Out of nowhere, for no reason whatsoever, this character who was established as a bad guy, who has a bad history with Fox, is good. He's like, oh, don't worry there, folks. I was uh, just being a goofball. I I'm not joking. See for yourself. Oh, I love you. I love you. I was just a bit emotional, that's all. That's all. No, I never wanted to catch you. Never. Well, I'm glad we're friends now. It gets worse, folks. It gets so much worse. So they go back to the home of the dog catcher. They meet his wife and his handicapped daughter who can't walk. And she's like, someday I'll learn how to walk. And out of nowhere, and I say that a lot, but it's true. Out of the nebulous blob that is this universe, a fairy shows up, one who can grant magical wishes and talks to Airy and the dog catcher like it's no big deal. Hey guys, I can grant you a wish. Uh, you better pick fast though, because I'm gonna get blown away by the wind. I'm the snowflake fairy and I'm here to make your wish come true, but only one wish, just one, Ari. Okay there, uh, Ori, this is your one chance to grant a wish. Tell her you want to see your mom again. Tell her. Ask her where Santa Claus is right now. Why are you all acting like this is normal? It's not normal. This is not normal. Why am I talking about this goddamn movie? Huh? So the fairy blows away. Uh, Ori's like, I, I want to uh, uh, make the girl not be able to walk. Uh, I mean, uh, reverse that. Make the girl to where she can actually walk. And they... <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the girl can walk, and, and then they leave. You know what? Screw you, dog catcher. It's time to go off to the fucking North Pole. They head to the North Pole. They meet up with a recurring character in the previous franchises called Bimbo. He's the deer who hung out with Simba. For those of you who watched my Simba King Lion video, you'll know who I'm talking about. Have you got that information about Santa Claus? <sighs> Well, certainly we know who he is and what he does. They meet up with Bimbo. They're like, hey, Bimbo, we got to know the other name of Santa's reindeer. What are they? And he's like, well, I know four of them, but the other ones are forbidden knowledge. So we have to go up to Santa's home and ask a small wizard for the rest of the information. Guys, I'm not making this up. Once more, watch and see with your own eyes. The names hey, of the reindeers are Rudolph, Rudolph Dasher, Prancer, Vixen, Thunder, Blitz, and Cupid, and Comet! Oh. So the characters, you know, the three main ones, go back to Central Park, and then they go to an orphanage, because why the hell not? They go to the orphanage, they meet up with this other dog, they feel bad for the kids who are in the orphanage and how poor they are. So Ari is like, I have an idea. Let's go sell one of my ruby buttons 
two gangsters. I know, it sounds like I am just fabricating the truth, but folks, once more, with feeling, see for yourself. Here is the money, now give us the ruby. There it is. The gangsters try to steal the button. They don't want to pay up what they owe. And a bunch of dogs come out of nowhere, attack them. The kid gets to keep the button and the money, buys the orphanage a nice Christmas, and then runs off to a church door where they then have a fever dream. All of the characters have their own separate fever dream where Ari dreams up that Santa Claus brings his parents to him. They build a snowman and then Winner and Fox go into the sewers of New York where they then meet a bunch of anther dogs with thumbs who can play instruments and then they eat a pile of hot dogs. That's the movie. 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 That's the, movie. That's the entire movie. What's going on? Ah! And then they wake up it was only a dream, but it wasn't a dream. Unfortunately, it happened. And then they went back home. And that's the movie. Merry Christmas. That's done. <sighs> All right, let's go over my five points. First, the story. This is one of the most confusing stories I've ever seen. It has zero focus. They come up with plot points out of nowhere that do not sync up with previous plot points. Hey, let's go to New York because it's cold there. Hey, let's go meet up with Santa Claus. Hey, we got to know the names of the reindeer for some reason. Hey, let's go try and like rob some gangsters of their money. It's all over the place. They don't know what they're talking about. This film was written by a bunch of Italian deviant art fanfic artists and, and they know it. We all know it. I'm exposing them for it. Yo, you're on four o'clock news being exposed by Saber Spark right now. Bam, what do you have to say for yourself? Nothing, I thought so. Huh? There are moments where I'm just straight up confused. I don't know what these characters are about. Because they fall back on the previous series that were established, a lot of us are left completely confused. We don't know who these characters are. And maybe that's on us for actually deciding to watch this film. It was our own decision to enter this realm of confusion. Look at the Wikipedia entry for Winner and the Golden Child. It's absolutely bonkers. You can't even wrap your head around it, let alone understand a Christmas episode from this series. He's there. He's there. What's Winner about? Okay, he's Blonde Jesus. Um, he talks to dogs, he goes to New York, and he wants to meet his parents. And he wants to talk to Santa Claus by knowing the reindeers, which by the way, he never even tells Santa Claus the name of the reindeers. So what was the point? We just shut up. I'm legitimately flabbergasted right now. I am lost. So yeah, story is one of the most confusing things I've ever seen. And it needs a hard, overhaul. Ah. Next, there's the dialogue. <laughs> they talk over each other all the time. It's absurd. You can't even hear what the characters are saying. And when they do talk, it's super clunky. Just awful writing for these poor voice actors to read. I don't know what you have to say, but if you believe in me and believe in you, then we can accomplish our goals. It's stuff like that. To take what they need, they use the money. And so, what's the problem? Let's go immediately and get us some money. Editing. Oh man, this movie is so poorly put together. There are scenes that just abruptly end where it's like, whoa, how did that lead in to the next scene? Why did it just suddenly conclude that way? You'll have these characters jumping up and down being like, hooray, yay, then just stop. They just suddenly stop out of nowhere and they're still. It doesn't make sense. It's so confusing and jarring. Again, my neck is snapping from looking at how crazy fast these scenes change. Hooray! Yeah, Hooray! Father Christmas! I don't think it's possible to see Father Christmas. After that, there's the voice acting. <sighs> Who did they hire? Like, did Mondo TV outsource this to some Italian English voice acting company? Or is this an American company? Because whoever they decided to choose to record this, 
did an awful job. I am the dog and I talk like this, shut up. This time you're really wrong. I'm really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. It's so abrupt with how these sentences began or how they end. And then the voices, this grunting. There's so much grunting. It's like an anime. And then you have the actual voice actors doing the barks for the dogs. But then there are moments where they bring in actual barks for the dog. What's that about? <laughs> and then also, to top it all off, these voices are pitched up or pitched down. So it sounds like robotic-y, where you can tell that there is an audio editor who definitely messed with their voices. I want to stay a while with my daddy and mummy, who I haven't seen for a long time. And finally, we have the animation. Why did you guys put JPEGs in this movie? Why are the colors so oversaturated? Why are there moments where you guys go balls to the wall with these characters being overly animated and then go right back to being static? Why are the character designs from different universes? They don't match up. And why don't you guys know how to layer your characters? As in, that perspective looks pretty bad. I only know that he dresses himself in a strange manner. The animation is just crazy. That's all I can say. It's absurd. And I keep saying that, but it's true across the board. The story, the voice acting, the dialogue, the editing, the animation, all of it is the definition of insanity. And I unironically love it. I'm just so glad this movie went, hey, f it, let's be crazy and have some real fun with it, whether they decided that intentionally or not. So how would I improve the film? Either not make it or don't change a thing. Like if you want this movie to be good, then change everything. Better animation, a better story with more focus, better voice actors and better dialogue for them to read, or don't touch it, leave it alone. This movie is absurd, it's insane, it's crazy, it's hilariously bad. And to me, that makes it worth watching. I say this 100% meaning it. I might watch this film every Christmas from now on. It is that good. And by that, I mean it is that bad. I'll get you for sure, I'll get you. <laughs> what have you done to make him so angry? <laughs> so in conclusion, I love this movie. I think it's incredibly insane, but in a very good way. It's part of the Mondo TV cinematic universe, and it truly represents the chaotic nature of these Italian North Korean cartoons. It's great for laughs. If you want to watch it with your friends and see something that is utterly ridiculous, then I highly recommend this film. It's up on YouTube. Go check it out. Seriously, it's the hardest I've ever laughed while watching a movie. And for that reason alone, I give this film a thumbs up. Or maybe I'm just still drunk. Who can say? <laughs> Merry Christmas, folks. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Eh? We come from the mayor's. No.